I know you two talk about <laughs> <laughs> So the act of getting the foot from the foot bar up into the tabletop position is the only time that you're disassociating, I should say, and then getting it back onto the foot bar. So it's, it's that coming to and from. It's really not a part of the exercise. Once you're there, they're stable. They're not moving. Okay. There isn't any leg. Uh, now, you could perhaps argue it in the supine abdominal series when we add coordination. Okay? Mm -hmm. Maybe mm -hmm. the coordination. I'll, I'll, um, I'll consider that. But again, you're going to have to have a pretty good rationale for it. And if you have to really rationalize too hard, it's just kind of like life. If you've got to rationalize it too hard, it's probably not the right thing. But with that said, I would accept your rationalization on the abdominal series simply because of that coordination mm -hmm. variation. But I would not accept mm -hmm. the supine abdominal series. So, But that's really good for the problem solving of the why. You know, if you're thinking that it's possible, you need to know the why not mm -hmm. as much as you need to know the why. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So we're going to put a little um, a little asterisk here, supine abdominal series, and the little asterisk is just so we know amongst ourselves it's the coordination. <laughs> okay, but we would have to, you know, in, in an exam situation, um, we'd probably want to be fairly clear about that. Okay. How would they seated footwork work here? Seated footwork is excellent. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And that's a very advanced level, I would think, possibly. Actually, you know, trouble. it's it's a very accessible exercise. Okay. Now, it's nice because it's in your familiar environment. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's actually, as long as they're placed properly on the foot bar, it's very safe and very accessible. It looks much more difficult than it truly is. And there can be that, that mental mm -hmm. piece of the fear of the round bar and being up there and having the legs on this mm -hmm. moving platform. So always being very careful about who you're choosing to do that. Are you going to choose that for, you know, your first encounter with your octogenarian? I certainly hope not. Okay. Right? So it's using your judgment, but it is actually surprisingly much more accessible. Um, because it is think. accessible like this, if you have someone you know is strong enough, we're not talking a, a geriatric person here, but getting them on that and having them do that because it seems like it, it is that a good right. way to give them a sense of self-efficacy? Absolutely, kind of perfect that? point. Absolutely, because so there's the, we talk about creating that successful Success. movement experience. Mm -hmm. So you want to choose your person so that it can be a successful movement experience, but what a payoff it is for them and for you, mm -hmm. because you're building then such a level of trust with them, but they have now taken that within themselves of, I am capable. They're going from I'm incapable to I'm capable, and there is no price for that. It is absolutely priceless, mm -hmm. yeah. Great point, great point. Okay. <clears throat> And this is great because this shows that you guys are thinking about this on a much higher level. So I'm very pleased at S2. Go team, synergy. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> so we've got our footwork, our feet and straps. Um, what seated about footwork. scooter? Yeah, scooter. Scooter. Yeah. Right. So that's yeah. got to create the disassociation of hips from the yeah. pelvis. Great. And the standing hip stretch. And standing hip stretch. Yeah, as you take the hands away, we're, wor we're working more on balance. But yes, we're still having to disassociate. Okay, and what else? I think there's one more thing that you could think of on the reformer. One more thing. Because we talked about its cousin, and, and this is kind of a nice way for you to look again at progression. Um, to look at progression, say for example, week one, I want to do bridging on the mat. Week six, I want to be able to do bridging on the reformer. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's just got this lovely logic to it, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. you're, we're, you've got their familiarity. You don't have to spend time with them on the reformer, cueing them to get that articulation so much, because you've already done that work on the, the mat. Or you may have even done it somewhere else, and we're going to get to that shortly. Okay, so I think that's pretty good on the reformer. Look at all those things that we can do for that person who's got issues with their half squat. We've got a lot of repertoire available to us, and we're only in our second unit. 
Okay, so trapeze table. So I kind of I'm kind of giving the farm away, right? Bridging here goes to bridging here. What could we have maybe done in between? Maybe this would be our week 12. What could we have done on the trapeze table that could be that intermediate week? The I don't really think what it's called. It's where you have your feet on the trapeze. Seated push through. No, feet on the trapeze could only be. Oh, okay. We've only learned one thing on the trapeze. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what the trapeze looks I like? I can't remember what it's called. Uh, hold on, hold on. Uh, you can just look up on the board. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Breathing. Breathing. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right, good. You're welcome. Just trying to save a little time. Okay, so um, so that's the, this could be the first exercise that you put in. Let me use a different color. There we go. Eileen wants me to get more colors. One two, three. Okay, so this is our progression. We're going to do the bridging on the mat first. We might even find that the bridging on the mat is too difficult for them, and we might want to reverse this one and two. They might need the assistance of the trapeze. Right? So, does this sound like this is all etched in stone? Mm -mm. Not really. No. It's, it's using your judgment. And that's what Polestar wants to see, and that's what they're testing in their exam, is that you've got the critical thinking piece. The critical thinking piece is critical. <laughs> okay, how are we doing so far? Am I still keeping you guys engaged? Absolutely. All right, good, that's important. So let's think of some other things that we've done that have been very much disassociation of hips. Leg spring series to time. Mm-hmm. And going back even further, let's dial it back. Let's dial it back. There's one that I'm waiting to hear. The nani nani. You got it. That's like ultra beginning level. Right. If you see that they get into that half squat, and yeah, you know, they as soon as they bend their knees, the whole spine starts to go with them. That's a lack of disassociation right there. You want to be able to see that there's a crisp delineation. Okay, so we may have to teach them that in 9090. That could be your week one. All right, good. So anything else? We got leg like spring supine breathing in 9090. So far on our track table. Footwork with the tower bar. Footwork with tower bar. Thank you. Okay, footwork with tower bar. <coughs> And anything else in our trap table disassociation of the hips from the pelvis lumbar spine, maintain the spine in neutral. We talked about how bent knee openings had a rationale because of this disassociation of the hips. It's just in more of a rotational disassociation, right? Because when we're doing the, the bent knee opening, there's some rotation and A, B, A, D, deduction okay. happening. So is there anything else just with me yeah, throwing that out? Leg spring. Sideline. Side okay, great. And so, supine also? Yeah, we've got supine. Oh, okay. That's the okay. second one. Leg spring, okay, supine. Okay. Right, supine and sideline. Okay. Great. Anything else that we want to put in there? I think we've pretty I much we've pretty exhausted well. yeah. our trapeze. Yeah, yeah. Well, so there we go. Um, pretty good. And then ladder barrel spine corrector. What have we got in that group? So, so far in ladder barrel spine corrector, we've done bridging. supine stretch, yes. mm -hmm. we've done bridging, okay. right? We've and we've done back forward bend. Supine stretch on both of them. And roll down and reach. Yeah, that's it. We have nothing for this. Bridging. Bridging. Oh, bridging. And then it goes all the way through. Right. So you can be looking at this bridging progression in a couple of different ways. You might want to on the week one now that we've got an extra one in here that's really pretty darn challenging. Let me change this. And you might be doing this in your week one along with the mat. Mm -hmm. Right? You could mm -hmm. be doing them both together. There's nothing that says you have to be stepwise in doing one than the other. These two are going to help each other from the very beginning and then perhaps in our, our second, which is what, week six. I'll put a six there, sorry. And then this could be our week 12. This could be where we pop the champagne, right? 
make the left eighth turn. Could be. Could be. But we're really working a lot on mobilization here. Mm -hmm. So we might want to reconsider it. You know, it really is just depending upon what you're seeing in your client, right? How are they progress progressing? What do they need? Um, okay, good. So we've kind of got a little format mm -hmm. in which we're going to be looking at this. So full squat, the difference between full squat and half squat is we're looking a little bit more at the lower extremity strength and control with the full knee flexion. Okay, so in our repertoire, let's take a look at, because half squat, full squat, and you have to go halfway in your squat to get all the way down full squat, right? Mm -hmm. So that probably means we're going to have a lot from half squat that's going to fit into full squat. Right? But then we want to really fine tune it to think about in full knee flexion. So we might say something like, well, then we don't really want the bent knee openings as much, that rotation. We're looking more into that really full sagittal plane and strength. Um, so from that position, oh boy, bridging really takes on a whole new significance because there is a lot of the leg strengthening. You're going from a full knee flexion to a partial knee flexion, right? So you start mm -hmm. off in full knee flexion. So we're looking at that. But let's just kind of go through this. So for your full squat, dead bugs and feet, well, let's say double leg pump, sorry. I'll back it up to the chair. I don't mean to uh, demean the chair. But the chair is, that's going to be great, right? Mm -hmm. Full knee flexion. So that's perfect. So we're going to take that one down. I'll just put a star beside it. We're going to take it down. Dead bug and femur arcs. What do you, what do you guys think about that as a group? Should that stay in there for our full squat? I think so. Absolutely. Because what, what are the knees in? They're in full flexion. Yeah. They're in flexion. Mm -hmm. They're in a night, about a 90 wow. degree. It's not exactly full. And it's not weight bearing. So it's not as much strengthening. But we're still getting, we still have to have that piece of the disassociation. So I'd say, yeah, that's great there. Bent knee opening. Do we have the knee in flexion? We sure do. But we're really looking at that opening up of the hip. You could argue it either way, but I'd say it wouldn't be as much on the forefront as, say, something like Richie. Um, the quadruped, sure, because we're working strength there of the leg moving up against gravity and the torso control. So I'd say, yeah, that's a good guy to move on down. Um, pelvic clock, probably not as much of an emphasis. Bridging gets actually two stars because it is that important. And same with leg pull front for your strength. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, now is there anything else um, that is in our repertoire that I haven't considered under chair or mat at this point that would be really good for leg strengthening? We're just going to look at it from the leg strengthening perspective. Anything that is in our mat or our chair, because we're just at mat and chair right now, that we have in our repertoire that I haven't considered yet. So let's do a quick little rundown, shall we? Mm -hmm. Okay, so in our principles, we had our mat exercises were the hundred, the dead bug, femur arcs, quadruped, swan one, that sidekick, mermaid. Yeah, there oh. you go. Arm arcs, prone extension, assisted roll up, standing roll down, and leg pull front. So very good. Sidekick. And why would sidekick, I'm just going to put it down here, sidekick, that could be a little bit more of strengthening, right? So what are we looking at in strengthening with sidekick? Well, we're definitely working on strengthening um, our core control a lot more with that exercise than the others because we have a smaller base.